and they just held their book fair on November 7th through November 14th. And the fifth graders are taking a field trip to Starbase in December. At Lottie, they are currently collecting blankets and towels for an animal shelter. Pajama Day with Santa is December 8th. Students can wear their pajamas and participate in lots of fun activities. The book fair was last week, and Santa Shop will be open December 6th through December 8th. At Great Oaks, they are holding a big a book fair, and a part of the book fair was at Goodies with Graham. Students invite their grandparents to school to enjoy cider, donuts, and a visit to the book fair. They are currently holding a sock drive, and Student Congress is making it blankets to support to children's hospitals. McCann's tomorrow is breakfast with a buddy. Students get to bring a special guest for their breakfast. And the Merry Market will be open on December 14th. And today, the students enjoyed a positivity project assembly to announce the P2 student ambassador. At Ashley, today was the Turkey Trot, a school-wide fundraiser. The class that raised the most funds will win a $100 gift certificate for Scholastic Books and a PJ Day. The top seller from each class won a special turkey hat to wear during the trot. At Naldrit, Thankful Thursday was last week, and students were able to invite someone special to enjoy a donut or bagel with them before school. The event was attended by over 400 people signing up to participate. Currently, they are holding a sock drive, which ends on Friday, and Santa's shop will be open from December 12th through the 15th. Middle School North, on December 2nd, there will be a Christmas movie from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., and it's $2 per person. And they're currently selling gobble grams for $1, which we delivered by Friday. In Middle School South, boys' basketball tryouts are in progress. The competitive cheer team has started practicing, and at Wednesdays are way to go Wednesday, where students wear green in a symbol of gratitude. And finally, at the high school, HOSA won the Gift of Life competition with 366 signups and took first place in activity points. Halloween Spirit Week went well with lots of great feedback. Drama had a, held a performance of The Birds on November 10th through November 12th. The boys' basketball tryouts will take place November 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Bowling tryouts will be the 16th and the 18th. JROTC is holding a blood drive on December 8th. Students must be 16 years or older to donate and must sign up by December 6th. And finally, JROTC had five teams that participated in the drill meet held at Anchor Bay High School and four teams placed. Advanced Color Guard finished in second. First Year Color Guard finished in first. Advanced Arms finished in third, and First Year Unarmed finished in second, and of one cadet placed first in the First Year Knockout. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next I will take a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, we'll move to the superintendent's update. Just the main update is the bond has passed. So I would like to extend a heartfelt um, thank you to the community and to the voters for having support for the, the bond proposal and for the strategic planning. Um, members who came together to kind of help us shape that. And we are now at the point where we wait on the canvas of voters. We should get that next month. And then once the board finalizes that, we ship that to the state and then they'll give us the final approval. And then our goal is to begin with design committees in January so that we can start. Right now we're thinking one for the elementary buildings, one for the libraries, because that kind of carries across all of the district. And then one for the career areas as well, for the middle schools and the high school. That's all. Any questions? Okay. Um, now we would move to the hearing of the public. Um, at this point, though, I don't have any submissions uh, for tonight. Uh, so we'll move on to communications. 
No communications. <laughs> We'll move to the consent agenda. Tonight's consent agenda consists of the approval of minutes from the October 27th special meeting, the personnel report, the financial report, and the bills payable for October of 22. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? I didn't call the roll. Ms. Knox? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, next into our new business, we have the summer tax resolution. I'm trying to pull it up here just a second. So the summer tax collection each year, the board considers an ongoing resolution requesting that each city or township collect the summer tax levy. This will continue from year to year until specifically revoked by the board. The business office is recommending approval of the resolution before us, which provides for collection of 50% of the operating millage, which is nine mills, and one half of the debt retirement millage, which is five mills for the fiscal year of 22-23 to be collected for summer of 2023. So the recommendation is that the board approve the summer tax collection resolution for 22-23 to be collected in this form for the summer of 2023. Is there a motion to accept the summer tax resolution? So I move to collect our tax dollars. I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next, we have a first reading of policy tonight. Um, so, Policies require two readings. Um, so the first reading is just putting it on the agenda and before um, the board and the, the public. The uh, policy changes would be policy 5008 regarding um, an administrative regulation update for meal charges. Uh, the board has those before them. And then um, the next policy is regarding uh, policy number 7,000, school community relations. Um, it's adopting a volunteer policy, um, basically stating that in summary, no individual would be permitted to volunteer if convicted of a uh, listed offense as the term is defined in section two of the Sex Offenders Registration Act, MCL 28.722 and incorporated in uh, other Michigan laws. If an individual has been convicted of a felony that is not a listed offense, as that term is defined in Section 2 of the Sex Offenders Registration Act and is incorporated in Michigan laws, the inv individual may only be permitted to volunteer if the board and the superintendent both approve the assignment in writing upon that person's request. Um, so the policy, I can say because I am on the policy committee, the policy committee met last night and went over these um, and would recommend these being adopted as presented before you tonight. Um, there's no um, vote taken tonight as a first reading, but if anybody has any questions, we can discuss at this point. Um, next, we have a field trip request um, asking for approval for Ishan Jane to partake in the three-night DECA conference in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ishan will be attending with his fellow state officers supervised by the Michigan DECA State Director Dave Walt for the Central Region Leadership Conference December 8th through 11th of this year. Ishan Jane will be taking a motor coach with other members of Michigan DECA leadership team to Milwaukee. Um, and so the recommendation is that the board approve him to attend the conference in Milwaukee as presented. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation? Um, I'll make the motion to accept it. Second. Any discussion or? Do you have any um, 
anchor bay staff going or is there just the student who's then going to be under the watch and care of the organization yeah it's just the students going in and he's gone to these previously because he's on the leadership committee so it's just one small group of students the leadership group and then as before they're being supervised by the state director okay um all in favor aye. 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 aye all opposed motion passes um next we have a bus award recommendation so currently four buses bus leases are set to expire as of june 30th of 2023 additionally the district has retired two buses to replace the buses the district has utilized msbo bus purchasing bid program and identified the lowest bidder that fit the recommendation from our transportation staff while these buses will not arrive on site until summer manufacturing delays require us to submit to begin the build process now so the recommendation would be that the board approve the recommendations to purchase six new buses to replace these retiring buses. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? I have a couple of quick questions. Um, do you know what we do with the buses that we're retiring? The, the ones that are leased, they go back to they just go back them, to the other two will um I honestly, I don't know what the exact process is, but I know we have a way that we can decommission them. All right. So the ones that, that were the 2004 and the 2007 buses were also lease buses? Yeah. So um, four of them were lease buses. Yes. Right. The other the other two, though, Dennis, are not lease buses. They're yeah. owned assets. Yeah. They'll be decommissioned. The um, lettering and striping will be taken off the bus or painted over. And then they're typically sent to auction, mm -hmm. probably in Flint. And do they offer an extended warranty program or are we just doing a straight lease? So we're just giving back at the end of the lease. Well, these for which ones? The new purchase or, or the, new, the new lease? The new ones, are, we are not obligated to, we could potentially lease them if we wanted to, or we could purchase them. But our intention is to purchase these with the bond funds. Okay. We just have to let them know. We don't have to make the decision until they come in. I got you. We, but they need... Uh, lead time so that right we can get them all right do you know if we do look into extended warranties or not just out of curiosity i do not believe that was part of the bid that's probably something though we could <clears throat> add well, that we could look that later on add. yeah right and especially if we're going to do a purchase you know it's for yeah the challenge gets to be with the extended warranties on the buses that they have to go into their certified dealerships right just right. like your ford vehicle yeah, so the cost by right yeah the guy down the street right so Right, because looking into this, it's not through Ford, it'd be through, in this case, Holland. I don't yeah, know if they offer an right. extended warranty, but just if we're going to try and... And Holland is in Holland. Yeah. So buses out of commission or that have to go to their shop for some reason may have to go to Holland. They, they do have some distributors. I think there's one in Dearborn, but I think it's something we certainly could look at before we actually... Yeah, yeah. The just be interested to see. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get to it. I'll just add as well... Um, the the six buses would be for six hundred fifty three thousand three hundred ninety four dollars. Um, Holland was not the lowest bidder, but it was recommended that they be chosen um, because they were the only dealer that offers a gasoline engine. Obviously, diesel prices are much more expensive, um, particularly right now. And the district's uh, mechanics is, are indicating that the new gasoline engines will run to about 300,000 miles, the same as the diesel engines were, um, but yet be cheaper to maintain, so. Yeah, repair and maintenance on a diesel bus is about 65 to 70% more than it is on a gas. The same can be said for propane, but we won't wander into propane buses, but uh, uh, and a lot of times it requires additional certifications and it's difficult to get those diesel parts, so gas, buses are certainly more economical to repair and maintain, although they may not get as good a gas mileage. I think in the long run, they're, they're a better option right now. Okay. Go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, and then we have the New Baltimore lease agreement. 
Um, the district has been in discussion with uh, the city of New Baltimore about leasing space at the Aquatic Center so they can provide additional services to our students and senior citizens in the area. This would include the portion of the Aquatic Center previously leased to HealthQuest and uh, time in the surrounding gyms at Ashley Lighthouse and Middle School North. Uh, so the recommendation is that the board approve the lease agreement um, that was presented before them. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Is there a second? I'll support. Any discussion? I think uh, it's great. It speaks to our current leadership that over the past many, 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 many years, we haven't been able to enter into these type of agreements with local communities. And suddenly we have two that have transpired in the past 90 days. Of course, those probably took about a year to get into place, and that's probably the reason why they weren't done any sooner. But as as a as a board, I think working within and with our community is important. And uh, I don't I don't know if we necessarily did that before. Like I said, to have two leases, two different municipalities uh, coming together fairly quickly, where we're essentially using uh, space that is otherwise underutilized and generating some revenue for it. Uh, I, I appreciate the efforts to to make sure that we're using those spaces. And we're not selling them. If we're selling them and we're not going to have access to them, if something changed in the district or we have an explosion of growth, then we're in a situation. At this point, we're looking at you know a couple of year leases with 60 day outs, 90 day outs. And, and I welcome that type of behavior, if you will, throughout the district of, for underutilized space. Is there a, um, a startup date that we're aiming to start this at? In the January first. January first. Mrs. Knox, yes. Mr. Green, yes. Ms. Berkmeyer, yes. Mr. Richards, yes. Mr. Moses, yes. Motion passes. Um, that is it for our new items. So we will move on to um, points of pride and board comments. I'm going to start us off, Mr. Moses. Um, no, I uh, always have uh, Anchor Bay itself is a is a pride in all the teachers and the staff that work here. But I would like to extend an extra congratulations to our new board members and our current board member that uh, we won the election. It's it's fantastic. I'm looking forward to working with you again, and looking forward to working uh, with the new board member. Um, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry, but Ben Detelli, right? Mr. Mr. Vendatelli, yes. So, and uh, like I said, I look forward to seeing what things we can do together. Thanks. Oh, that would be me. Uh, I too would congratulate Dominic. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, we're looking forward to the new face to be on the board and, and be involved with what's going on in our community. And I also wanna thank the community and our taxpayers uh, for having the faith to believe that uh, this board and its leadership, our superintendent, Mr. Jankowski, uh, will faithfully execute what we've promised in the bond, despite what others up here have said. Um, and those others uh, have not attended nearly the meetings that the rest of us have, have not participated in walking tours of, of the buildings and have also not have, uh, attended strategic planning sessions in which the community roughly over a thousand people involved, whether it was board members, students, principals, teachers, taxpayers that don't have students in it, and parents. Uh, it was resounding and to sit in this room and watch tables of people uh, organizing what they believe was our mission, our drive and our goal. Uh, and the reality of it is, is, is the particular person who was speaking against the, the bond was in leadership when our buildings got into a state of disrepair and led to what is necessarily um, $100 million in repairs. I know the bonds for 170 because we need to upgrade some schools, but you know the reality of it is 100 million of that is for our buildings that are in state, state of disrepair that need to be repaired and brought up to standards that, that our parents and our taxpayers pay for and expect. Uh, so again, thank you for all the efforts, Mr. Jankowski and, and all of the community that was out 
speaking positively about the bond, about what we're going to do, uh, and for allowing this board the opportunity and the trust to take that $170 million and give you the district that we promised we'd, that we would give you for the last six months as we move through this process. Okay. Um, I will add to that. I, I firmly believe that the process that that we were led through by Mr. Jankowski with strategic planning and the involvement of so many uh, individuals and various stakeholders led to the success because I think when we talk about you know who who the voters are going to listen to I think probably more than any of us up here it was the other people who attended the those strategic planning meetings and participated because when you hear when you can hear it from a, a neighbor who doesn't have any other vested interest um, on the board or in the district as an employer or anything like that, you know, that it was a cooperative effort from all the stakeholders and that it was really agreed upon in, in most of those sessions, if not all of them, that, you know, this was the reality of where our district needed to go um, and why we needed to do it this this direction, this way, and at this time. Um, so I think it became very clear during those meetings. And I think that all the participation that we were led to have uh, by Mr. Jankowski helps that um, because, like I said, it it really, I think hits hits harder and drives it home better when when you hear it from your neighbors um, and your friends that you value and trust as well, who might have participated as opposed to, us as board members or employees of the district. Um, so I wanna thank all those, everybody who has been involved throughout this process, um, it's lots of people and uh, everything went very smoothly in that way. And I think um, I think we will be pleased when we're done um, with this process. I know it's a multi-year long process, but um, I think we're, we're setting ourselves and our district up for success um, academically, um, financially, and you know, operation-wise. So um, in the end, I think we've kind of hit a home run with this bond passing, and um, I'm looking forward to what the next couple of years are going to bring as we get things rolling. Definitely have to agree with everything that's uh, already been said about the bond. Um, it was uh, it was actually very fun to come together for those strategic planning meetings and, and all of that. Um, and you had people with all different sorts of interests and, and focus. And uh, yeah, like Ms. Berkmeyer said, there was there was a general consensus about everything. Um, so it's a, it's a proud moment, I think, for our board, our community, our district uh, to have that pass. And I'm excited to see what we do. Um, congrats to Mr. Green and Mr. Venditelli. Uh, Excited to have you join the board. Um, in case you haven't heard, it's a new day in the Bay, so be prepared. Um, I want to congratulate our cross country. We have two all county, um, first team for Thomas Westfall and second team for Zach Rubitz. I know they've been having an outstanding, or they had an outstanding season. And um, congratulate the, I wanted to congratulate the Anchor Bay bands. They had their gala and auction Saturday night. And um, a few of us board members and Mr. Jankowski uh, were uh, Mr. McDonald were all able to attend. And it was a really, it was a really great and fun event. And it's nice to be in a casual setting with other board members and staff and parents. Um, and just have fun and uh, raise money. And they don't even remember exactly which scholarships, but they have a new scholarship for the students that will actually begin this year. Um, so that's really great. And uh, that's about it, Mr. Richards. I didn't I didn't mention the, the band boosters because I didn't get baskets. <laughs> I won two baskets, but somebody else won a TV. <laughs> It's getting rough in here. It's getting rough, rough crowd. Rough crowd. <laughs> Strike that. Um, congratulations, Dominic and Patrick, on your election. Um, I'd like to thank the Anchor Bay Community Foundation for the donation of the McCon to Elementary Student Council. I'd like to thank everyone that voted yes for the Anchor Bay School Bond. Um, uh, like previously said, you know, our district needs it. You know, thank you, Mr. Jankos, for all the work. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that organized Veterans Day luncheon and thank the veterans for your service. 
The ABA held their dueling piano fundraiser on November 4th. I'd like to thank everyone that attended and volunteered. Money raised went to the ABA scholarships and the 50-50 proceeds went to the Zach Morissette Memorial Scholarship. The junior ROTC held their drill meet, as mentioned earlier, um, a few weeks ago. I'd like to congratulate the teams that earned trophies as well as some of the winners from Knockout. Uh, Jacob Hicks, first place, year, first, place, first place for first year Knockout. Connor Spots, fifth place for first year Knockout. Logan Ratchaw for fifth place armed knockout. Emma Slowinski for sixth place armed knockout. It's also great to see Mr. Jankowski in the crowd as well. I had to teach him a couple of things, so it was great to see him. Uh, McCons Elementary School is still looking for crafters for the McCons Mary Market on Wednesday, December 14th. I'd like to thank everyone that organized and participated in college night. It was great to see. It was a great job by all. I'd like to thank the staff at Middle School North and Middle School South that organized the seventh and eighth grade dances. Looked like a great time. I know my son talked about it a few days after the dance in South. Uh, the Good Fellows Christmas party is Saturday, December 10th from noon to two. If you're interested in attending, contact the Good Fellows. Um, I was able to attend the performing arts play The Birds, a modern adaption. It was a great job by the students. We also had some staff talent in the show as well. Um, it was great to see the student support in the audience. Great job. Congratulations to middle school North student of the month, sixth grade Gracie Genrich, seventh grade Madison Morphew, and eighth grade Lily Connors. Great job. Congratulations to the middle school North dance team who was featured on a publication and chosen for a professional fo photo shoot. Anchor Bay North held its annual Sailor Stroll Walkathon, and this year they broke their fundraising record. Student, students raised $30,000 for this year's event. Awesome job. Thank you to Ms. Kessel and Ms. Finn Hudson for organizing the event. Congratulations to Anchor Bay Middle School Combined Competitive Dance Team. They competed at the Dance Team Union Competition in Rochester. They placed first place in regional champs for both jazz and uh, palm division and took first place in solo and duets category. Anchor Bay is still hiring. We are looking for a technology support specialist. I did need one today. Um, congratulations to Middle School North Captain of the Month, Chrissy Medley. Thank you for everything that you do. I'd like to recognize uh, the students at Naldrit Sack and Ms. Kalen's GSRP class that wrote letters to our soldiers and, and veterans for Veterans Day. I would also like to thank Great Oaks Elementary students who made over 250 Veteran Day cards to honor those that served in our military. Awesome job. I'd like to recognize the Anchor Bay High School Key Club. They recently made some beautiful dog blankets for the animal shelter. They held a Socktober where they collected 1,600 pairs of socks for kids in need in Kids Coalition Against Hunger, where 100,000 meals were packaged and ready to ship. Um, I'd also like to commend uh, Max Hagel, a member of the Boy Scout Troop 256, he completed his Eagle Scout project by making four custom benches branded from McConnell Elementary School that came out awesome. I'd like to recognize the high school varsity volleyball team. Great season. You should be very proud of your accomplishments. I'd also like to congratulate the varsity soccer team. Another great year. I know the results weren't what we wanted, but we still made Anchor Bay District very proud. Thank you for a great season. Uh, my points of pride this month would be Thomas Westfall, um, All-State fourth place finish. Awesome job, and I'm looking forward to next year. Thank you. Okay. Um, any legislative update? I, I think this is like the fourth month in a row. No, there's, <laughs> I, don't think, uh, I don't think you'll see anything in the lame duck, so not until January. Um, as for board committee update, um, I know the policy committee, like I had said earlier, uh, met yesterday uh, regarding the policies that we had a first reading on tonight um, and some others that will probably be forthcoming in the future. Um, I don't believe any other committees have met since our last meeting. So, all right, and that is it for tonight. So we take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourns at 7.32. Good night.